they laugh at it. Nuh-uh. I need a break. I, no, I'm not. They lied. That's why I don't trust people. I'm not doing it. Okay, so let me explain what happened here. So I was out doing some college scouting um, because after I'm done with my two free years, I get to go to another college to pursue what I want to do. So I was scouting colleges and different types of jobs. Dixie was not here because Dixie is semi-retired. She only goes out to like, you know, grocery stores now on occasion if she really wants to work. But otherwise, she's almost always at home. So I bring Dante, who is the dog in this photo, playing frisbee. Uh, he's my service dog in training. So when we arrived to this, like, I guess you can call it like a career fair type thing, um, we got off the buses and um, we had stepped out and I was standing on the sidewalk, like waiting to be let in. And this lady walked out with her doodle off leash. Um, it w looked decently behaved. It did not see Dante, so I wasn't really that worried, but it didn't see Dante. It just walked by off leash. It was kind of straying away, trying to go in the grass and whatever, but I was like, it's fine, whatever. So I was a little bit panicky though, because I do have a lot of trauma. Um, my past service dog, Dixie, has been attacked a lot. So as you can imagine, I was very nervous with Dante only being a six-month-old puppy that if this dog were to attack or do something really traumatizing to him, it could screw him up forever since he's in a very impressionable state. But I had got word that the dog had left, like they put it in a car and drove off. So I'm like, okay, maybe they were a part of a different, you know, high school or whatever, because this was a senior trip. So I'm like, maybe it was like a therapy dog for another school or something, because it definitely wasn't a service dog. Um, with the way it was like straying off, it, if it was, it was very new into training, but even Dante wouldn't do that, and he's six months old. So I mean, there's that. But um, I just assumed it was a therapy dog for another school. So I was under the impression that they had left. Well, they had not, <laughs> as you saw at the beginning of the clip. Um, the dog came at mine. Um, basically what happened is I went to the other end of the building and my friend was, I was like, I don't really want to go over there cause I don't want to risk anything with, you know, Dixie being attacked. I just don't want to risk anything. And she's like, I understand, but like you want to go over there cause there's like careers you're interested in, which there was like, I really want to be a cop. Like it's something I'm really interested in. And the cop booth was right next or the sheriff's department booth was right next to their booth, which was a funeral home or whatever. So they were like explaining death and what they do for dead people and whatever. So the dog was right there. And I'm like, I don't want to go over there and have Dante be like attacked, worst case scenario. Or even if the dog's friendly, like come up to play with him because that's going to distract him because Dante's a very playful puppy. He will get very distracted. He's very playful. So my friend's like, oh, it's okay. Like I'll go up to her and I'll ask her to put her dog on a leash because it was still off leash in the building. So my friend walked up and she's like, hey, my friend has a service dog in training. Um, can you please put your dog on a leash? Because we don't want anything to happen. We don't want your dog running up on him and distracting him because he's still very impressionable and he might get distracted very easily. The lady gave her major attitude and was really, really snarky about it. She's like, my dog doesn't need a leash, but thanks. And she was like, oh, he's a service dog too. And she's like, I know we're not saying your dog's out of control or anything. We're just saying that... Um, the puppy that she has you know he's still learning and we can't have anything happen so she put her dog on a leash which I was very thankful for I was very happy and I was getting calmer because she you know put her dog on a leash so I know there was some type of um control even though there wasn't I thought there would be some type of control with the dog being on a leash well we were making our way around we were about I would say roughly eight to nine feet away from her um by the time we were about to reach the police booth um, we were at a different booth. I think it was like, what was it? It was like, I think it was EMS or something like that, I believe. And we were just like, because my friends were interested in it. So I just stopped and I was hanging back. And Dante saw the dog. He was wagging his tail nonstop. He was already getting distracted. You know, he loves everything and everyone. So, you know, I was trying to distract him and stuff. I didn't have any treats or anything. And I can't use his reward ball because I can't, you know, express his drive while he's being a service dog. That's not professional. So I just kind of asked for a focus, which he did. He didn't go for the dog. He just laid down and was wagging his tail and, you know, really happy to see another dog there. Um, this dog wasn't too happy to see him there. 
um, because as we were walking towards the police booth, we put ourselves between like five, seven different people, and I was going outwards, like walking at an angle to avoid and go as far away as possible, and thank God I did, because she decided to hold the absolute end of the leash, like the little loop at the end of the leash, and let her dog hit the end of the leash as it lunged at Dante. And I said, no, like, I was like, that's not okay. And, you know, I was just really freaking out. And then she started laughing when Dante got distracted. And that sent me over. I went outside. I had to sit down on the ground. And I was having a severe panic attack because I literally explained that I don't, you know, I have a lot of trauma with dogs attacking Dixie. I don't want the same thing to happen to um, Dante. And I have specific trauma with doodles or poodles or any type of, like, curly coated dog that resembles a doodle or a poodle because that's what has attacked my dogs a lot same goes for labs goldens malinois i just have a lot of nervousness around those dogs so when these dogs act like that it makes me extra nervous and can send me over even if the dog's intentions weren't bad my brain immediately assumes that they were so we reported it but we never said her dog was acting aggressively because i rewatched the footage to make sure what i was about to say was 100 percent true and I said, her dog wasn't acting aggressively. It just came out to play with him. And it made me really scared. And I said, that's not professional. That's not how a service dog acts. So on top of lying about him being a service dog, she also interfered with my service dog and training's job. So the supervisor went in and talked to her. And they're like, hey, you know, you need to control your dog. Like, this dog is a service dog in training. And she's like, well, mine's a service dog too. Like, saying he was fully trained or whatever, which clearly he was not. And then um, we got word from the supervisor that she was, like, warning us not to start any rumors. Like, I don't I don't know why she would assume. Like, I know there's, like, a s- stigma between service dog handlers and whatever, like, that we like to start drama and rumors. Trust me, we don't, <laughs> okay? We like to just stick to ourselves. We don't like to cause any trouble. Like, I was just trying to look at things I was interested in, and you let your fake service dog lunge at mine. Like, that's why I got upset. So she was saying that she didn't want us spreading rumors about her dog being aggressive to all the other students and people and blah, 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 blah. I didn't. I literally just sat outside and I was trying to call myself. Dante was trying to alert, but he was very confused and distracted from this dog. So he was having trouble, which is why you don't distract service dogs in training because they get very distracted very easily, especially when one like Dante has only been training for a few months. So I guess you can say I wasn't happy at all and she was causing drama between us. And I'm like, this is unnecessary drama. Like, just control your fake service dog. I'm not even going to make a big deal that your fake service dog is there. But, you know, I am going to make a big deal if you try to get your dog to come at mine again. So I actually had to cut out that whole entire section because she wouldn't leave. So I had to skip that whole entire section of job scouting and move to the college scouting. And after we moved to the college scouting, immediately, like when we came back in the building, she left. I'm, I don't know if, like, the people that own the building told her to leave because of her dog because she was letting people pet it. I don't know if it went after a person playfully and they got scared. I don't know. But um, she left right when we came back in. It could have also been her nerves, like, thinking her dog was going to do it again. Um, but <laughs> this was absolutely ridiculous, you know? Just absolutely ridiculous. Like, there's no need for your dog to be off-leash, especially when it's not a service dog. If your dog's not a service dog, it should never be off-leash. Ever. Unless you're in a specific area where it's allowed. Like, say you're on a a trail and they allow off-leash dogs. Go ahead. But if you're in a building that is non-pet friendly, you know, and even requires service dogs to be on a leash, your dog, your pet dog, should be on a leash.